Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Real Next webinar series 2024. Hope you all had a great holiday. We took a couple weeks break from our webinar series, but are back and have a whole uh, a slew of new sessions for you this year and are excited to, to bring them uh, to update you on the latest and greatest at, at Real Next, help you make the most of the solution and learn about the, the opportunities to take advantage of our full commercial real estate technology stack. I'm Jeff Finn, CEO at Real Next, and uh, joining me today is Matthew Smith, head of Western Region Sales. And uh, Matt's going to take you on a, a tour of primarily the CRM, but uh, a few other aspects of the Real Next uh, navigator to talk about prospecting and all pro prospecting. We're going to talk about just a number of different elements of the solution, try to uh, go deep into these and uh, and then uh, get you back to work. So we're going to talk about building filters and views to target properties, companies, and, and contacts, and some predictive analytics that we have to find the most likely tenants, buyers, and sellers, and really focus, help you focus on the 595 rule. I'm not sure if uh, all of you are familiar with that, but it's, uh, it's, it's I guess, part of the CCIM training of, of uh, over the history where, you know, if you look at 100% of the market, 5% is active, and that's where you want to focus, and we can help you identify that that 5% set and spend most of your time working on the 5% rather than trudging through all 100 to get to that that 5. Part of that is also in setting up your A, B, and C level prospects and setting up follow-up routines so you're in front of the right people at the right time. and making sure you have the right cadence and, and frequency using your dashboards and timelines to, to stay top of mind with, with those prospects. And then a new uh, uh, capability that we've just added and will be turned on in your systems. If you're new, you probably have it. If you're a legacy user, it will be switched on in the in the coming days, but new custom layout. So you're going to be able to build screens and we'll show you how to do that. So you can design your own screens and views to to better target properties and prospects. So if you want to have an industrial view or multifamily view of uh, properties, or have your your prospects, uh, you know, one screen for your tenants, another screen for your your investors, and maybe a different screen for multifamily investors and your net lease investors. However you'd like to configure it, we'll show you how to make that happen. So your prospecting will be as efficient as possible. And then we'll take you in after you've identified prospects to um, set up email campaigns and, and show you how our dashboards and statistical metrics give you access to the results so that you can turn those leads, uh, those uh, campaigns into lead generating machines and even set up private domains for your, your, uh, your branding in the market, whether it's out of your CRM for general solicitation or from our marketplace for uh, listing promotional blasts, uh, you, could, you can run highly targeted campaigns straight from real next and and of course we want leads to be coming your way through the system and prospecting through marketing in our marketplace and getting your property set up as featured and and using our listing syndication to to uh, broaden your reach and to syndicate out your listings to a number of third party sites including the uh, ri marketplace to take advantage of their fantastic auction capabilities that uh, will be more and more uh, efficient ways to to sell properties and this type of market where there's a big uh, gap between bid and ask and using the auction methodology to transact becomes more and more compelling. So Matt, why don't you get us started? I'm going to turn the screen over to you, but uh, why don't you get us started and show everyone how to build filters and views and take advantage of that from the, whether it's a property and linked, uh, linking that into your, your, uh, your call list or straight into companies and contacts to identify the best prospects so give you the the screen and take it from there fantastic just waiting for jeff to hand over the torch there and then I'll show my screen here in just one second all right let's go ahead and we're going to show this is clean monitor screen number two uh, so thanks everybody for joining us here once again i really enjoy the colors that jeff used for the powerpoint that is a nice light brown and it really allows things to stand out. If you're a fan of colors, uh, stay tuned. I'll show you how custom layouts and colors are gonna help you uh, prospect easier, faster, and more efficient. That's really what we're about. As we go through, we wanna try to figure out how to predict the likelihood of tenants, buyers, sellers, and so forth in the market and we'll work through that. Uh, don't let predictive analytics scare you. 
Uh, it's basically looking at a couple key data points and then using those data points to find prospective uh, tenants in the market, uh, buyers, sellers, and, and so forth as we go through it. Uh, in the real next program, uh, we have contacts, companies, properties, spaces. We also have lease comps and sales comps. Out of each one of those, you're going to be able to do similar things with views and filters, uh, save views with filters combined or filters uh, that filter out the data or just give you a list criteria uh, that you can prospect for. We also have some really great map functionality that I'll show you that can really help you target prospect. Uh, know your market, own your market. And it's going to be more and more important to really fine tune on these prospecting than it ever has with AI and automation, um, having that understanding of knowing the buildings, uh, knowing the tenants, knowing the companies is going to be more true now and in the future than it ever has before uh, and, and bringing that personal relationship back. So when I talk about views and I talk about filters, uh, filter is a way to narrow down your criteria. So you can see my screen here I have, and it's going to show all my properties that I have in my system. I have photos. You can drag and drop photos. You can take pictures in the field with our mobile app. I just heard there's a new release coming out in February for a mobile app. It is absolutely game changing. You're going to want to stay tuned to see that. Uh, with your prospecting, uh, you can have data from Railnext data. You can have data from data sources that you import via Excel. You can add data manually, or you can add data in the field. When we're going and we're looking to really target properties, we can target properties based upon a couple things. One is we can target properties based upon an asset class. So a lot of folks are generalists. You know, we're going to go ahead and we're targeting um, healthcare, and then we're targeting industrial, or we're targeting multifamily, or we're targeting office. Uh, we recommend when you are doing that targeting prospect for pro prospecting that you focus on one asset per day. Uh, one asset per week or so forth. So you're in that same communication channel and you're really starting to hum along when you're talking on those assets. So one way to find the information is to select the asset class you're trying to focus in on. Another way is really setting up those filters. Now those filters can be saved with inside of our program and there's two filters that you can look at. One is a simple filter and one is an advanced filter. A simple filter is going to show you just what do we want to see? In this case, I have a filter set up that's going to show all my team properties. My team is going and we're working on um, properties that we're going to be prospecting on, so it's in here. Now, I can add additional data points, okay, additional data points. Maybe I want to add building class, square footage, number of tenants, um, uh, note expiration date. Whatever those data points are, I can continue to add to those, which is going to go and what we call drill down. It's gonna take that list from 1,182 properties down to maybe 82 properties or 40 properties. It allows me to prospect. If you have a filter that you use quite frequently, and let's build one real quick. Maybe it's gonna be cap rate. Uh, let's see everything that has a current cap rate, or maybe it's gonna be building class. If you have a set, of data points that you're filtering upon, all you need to do is just go ahead and go down to the bottom. You can click Save As and you can click New. And this will allow you to save your filters. If you click this box, Add Favorites, you don't have to create this filter again. And all you need to simply do is come in here and put in the data information. I want to see all buildings that are greater than six cap. I want to see everything that's lower than six cap. I want to see everything with a loan coming due in the next six months, three months, whatever that criteria would be. With an advanced filter, you can do or. I want to see all buildings that are building class A or B, because that's what I'm prospecting in my market. And that's the difference between advanced filter and simple filter. They're both simple. Uh, so don't let that word um, advanced scare you. Now you can see here that I have standard filters. I also have building class filters. I have a last using year built number of units filter. I have my data filter. I have a prospecting demo with filter views. And then I have one just called state because I like to go state by state. Once you decide that you want to save any one of your filters to simply go ahead and have one of those filters pulled up, all you have to do is click that little play button and that'll bring up that data set. So, Maybe you're prospecting in one area today and tomorrow you're in another area or you're prospecting on one asset class or another asset class. You can simply go ahead and save that filter. 
Now within pro prospecting, you also want to make sure that you have the key data points that you want to see that's important to you. And some people have different ways of doing things. Jeff might be a tea drinker and I'm a coffee drinker. And Christina is a Coca-Cola drinker and Stephanie is a water drinker. That's great. We're all getting our fluids, but we're all doing it a little bit differently. So with our program, we allow you to create these custom views. These custom views might have information like loan amount. Right? We want to look at maybe an interest rate or loan amount. Maybe we have a loan that's coming due at a certain period of time. Or maybe we've seen a lot of disposition of a certain building class or type, and we want to let other people in the area know that, hey, by the way, Ken, there's been a lot of disposition uh, where people are selling off these asset classes, and, and here's a couple of reasons why. Uh, and, and you might want to look at possibly selling your building, or maybe there's a bunch of tenants in their building that are getting ready to turn over in the next 18 to 24 months, and they're already 70% vacant, or 70% um, occupied, so 30% vacant, and if they have any more turnover, obviously their building's going to be worth less money. This is a way to help predict that and then build a narrative to why someone should sell and so forth. So using these views, you can simply go here and click views and hit edit. And you can see here that I have some of my views and my views might look a little bit different than yours. See how it says mail merge down here and there's no little funnel next to it? Well, that's because each one of these views that I have is not only gonna change the top, but it's also going to include a filter. That's right, so if I have a view that I want, like loan maturity view, tenant rep view, active landlord rep view, or listing view, I can select each one of these and it will change all the headers within inside of my screen so I can see the information that I need to help me find folks in the market. Now, I don't wanna take this whole presentation time and talk about just properties, but I do like to set things up like this. Now, you can add more and more to your filter. So if you have a base filter and a base view and you want to add more to that for that particular day, you can do so. And I'll show you one of the ways that I really enjoy doing. So what I'm going to do is I have my filter. I'm going to click the arrow in the right hand side. Everybody asks me, where is that arrow? And now what I'm doing is I'm putting into a nice little split screen. I'm clicking contact so I can see Ken Stone. He's at 2K LLC. I have the information that I need for the property on the left-hand side. And today I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm gonna sort by loan amount. Maybe you wanna sort by interest rate. Maybe you wanna sort by a couple things. If you hold the shift key down and you click on any one of these uh, title sections here, like loan, loan amount, loan type, uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna add a different number to it. So you can sort by column one, then column two, then column three and column four. And again, remember, if you're doing this, all you need to do is you can come over here and you can actually then save this and this will save as a nice custom view for you and you can even add that filter. But what I've been really enjoying when I'm going in pro prospecting is going on and isolating an area. So if I know if I talk to specific property owners in a certain area, they're most likely to have similar questions, similar concerns, similar whatever they would be and using our mapping functionality you can really get in tune you can use our polygon you can use our radius search maybe there's a property that just sold within a 15 mile radius of north las vegas and we want to pull up everybody in that area and we want to do a couple things we want to call each one of those owners to see if they're interested in selling um, maybe they need representation or anything else we can do it through here now i'm going to go back in and i'm going to add my additional filter so i can narrow down that criteria a little bit more and again, I have that pro prospecting uh, right in here, and you can see here my sort stayed the same way. Now, as I'm going down here, I can simply go on the left-hand side, and as I'm calling each one of these building owners to see if they're interested in possibly selling, need representation uh, for their leasing needs, I can go and click through here. Now, a couple things that you might wanna do is not only can you do it just like this, but maybe you're a tenant rep and you wanna see all the properties and all the spaces in the building. All you need to do is click the spaces tab right here and it will pull up the property with the space information in there. Anytime you have a space information on there, you can easily just click the dial. And what it's gonna do is it'll pull up a history tab. And from there, it'll tie the history not only to the property, it'll tie the history to the company, it'll tie the history to the tenant. So you're calling each one of the tenants. 
So collated prospecting from the property side is great for landlord brokers, it's great for tenant brokers, it's great for sales brokers, and you can utilize the filters and the views so you can pro prospect with that. But there are other ways to pro prospect. Now each building is considered the gray shell, right? It's the outside of the building, but the tenant occupies a space. Another way to prospect is you can use the same exact filters and views and maps and everything else. But in this case, we want to narrow it down even more. We want to find all the tenants that are expiring in a certain period of time. I can simply come over here and say lease lookup. Now my lease looks up saved. And it's going to say, well, I want to see all leases that are greater than or equal to X days. And then today plus X months or less than X months. And what that did is with that basic filter and two data points, again, predictive analytics, will help you find that. And now we can see here are the tenants that are expiring. I can put it into my nice little list view. I can change the view depending on whether I'm calling office, retail, industrial, so I have the pertinent information. I can sort by things, lease expiration, property address, tenant company, and you can see here as I add shift to it, it goes one, two, and then three. Now from here, I love to use a split screen view. Uh, you do what's best for you. I can see more details if I scroll down, if I want to see more details on the lease. And again, I can simply click the dial from here. It's going to tie the history not only to the contact, but it's also going to tie the history to the company as well. So I can make sure that information's in there. And no matter where I'm looking, it's going to be easily found. I can put in things like cold call. I can put in things like lease expiration. You can also use this little pop-up box so if there are certain fields you have, like notify lease expiration and so forth, you can even save these in these little pop-up boxes so you don't have to type it out. If you're like me and you're really a bad typer, all you gotta type is no, choose what you want, go down here. Hey Tim, it's Jeff and Matt, wanted to reach out. There's been a lot of activity in the market. I've seen some news articles about Logistics Express expanding. Wanted to see if we can meet up. I'm going to be heading out to Las Vegas to train some offices in the next coming weeks. What's your schedule like? Give me a call when you can. Using your basic native voice dictation, I can easily do that and schedule a follow-up. That is a fantastic way to be able to uh, keep track of all your follow-up and activity as you're pro-prospecting. Now, remember, these can be used on properties. They can be used on spaces. You can go in and you can do this on comps. So if you have a bunch of sales comps, maybe a property is traded five years ago, three years ago, and you notice that properties in that area typically trade every three to five years. Maybe you want to call the property owners. Same thing with companies. That company information, we can use those same filters and same views. So if we're going after a certain set of companies or we saw something in the news about a certain company, we can use those same views to call on those companies. And we can go ahead and we can utilize any of the data in there and we can filter down that information. Similarly, same thing with contacts. Maybe we're in the market and we're talking to effective tenants. We don't have much more information than maybe their lease expiration, maybe their square footage. Uh, we can use those data points to uh, see if they're interested in needing representation for leasing. Uh, or again, pro prospecting is not just for getting someone to sell or lease, maybe it's getting to someone to buy. We can use those same filters to pull up buying criteria for people. Maybe it's apartments, maybe it's industrial or office, maybe it's uh, between a certain square footage or any of the other details, we can utilize those filters to save that information. Um, and that way we pull up a list of buyers and call a list of sellers and we combine them together and we have the best of both worlds. Maybe they have a loan coming due and you can show them you have five buyers that are interested in buying their property. It's a better, better pitch than what you had before. Jeff, how are we doing on time here? Are you ready to go? To I, I think it's perfect. I think what's in context now, why don't we move to ABC uh, tiering and uh, scheduling. You show timelines and how to to uh, program all the follow-ups that need to be made So and how they'll show up on your dashboards to make sure you're getting all your priorities done each day. And, uh, Let's talk your best about prospects. It. Yeah. What, what are the ABCs? The ABCs are, to me, 
probably the same to you. You have your A clients. Those are the clients you're talking to every 30, 60, 90 days. You have your B clients. Those are your clients that you sometimes do business with, but you want to stay in touch with. And then the C clients, you, you're, you're trying to really warm up to more of a B client or A client. You can use one, two, three. You can use ABC. You can use ABC and one, two, three. It doesn't matter. But it's really going to start helping you create that follow up routine. Maybe you just did a lease with Jenny and it was, uh, you know, 800 square foot lease. Wasn't much. But Jenny can lead you to something else. Jeff, you had a story about someone and a couple small deals turned into a large deal. What was that one about? That was a that was a routine. It was a follow up, correct? I mean, there's so many of them, but yeah, I think the what what you're talking about, the the uh, the, the biggest the six, one of the biggest successes we had when I was at NAI was the uh, we we began to represent international paper across the country because we did their the subleases that their current provider didn't want to do. So you know, we we did a number of, of subleases for them, and then that that led to confidence and trust, built a relationship, and then we started doing hundred thousand square foot, two hundred fifty thousand square foot dis distribution centers all over the country. But the the idea of doing the the you know, small deals to get the large deals always pays off. And the if if you if the prospect is um, has larger opportunities, it's it's worth uh, investing the time in those opportunities. The other is just to make sure you're following up on on expiration dates and that, that lease expiration date um, is key. You know, so often we're finding that agents are expecting the client to remember them uh, in four years or five years and you're having a timeline to know that you're sending notes, you're sending cards, you're calling between in that five-year routine so that uh, when it's 18 months ahead, you're top of mind. And when you make the call to them 18 months ahead, uh, based on your timeline and, and uh, triggering through your dashboard that you're sure to get that representation and not call up say, oh, geez, I just hired somebody else. Uh, and that, that happens way too often. So getting things programmed in, programmatic in your, your system with follow-up, timely follow-up is key, uh, like this this ABC routine, making sure that you're, you're, you have a cadence set with, with each prospect type and you know, if you're you're a if people you're you're talking to every day on deals but you might just to make sure you've got a monthly checkup health check call and to see what's new what's happening and then uh, as you said Matt the, the others are on a less less frequent basis yeah and it's interesting because a lot of times people make a sale but then they forget that they made a sale and they don't follow up with the owner every three months six nine months a year whatever it would be and some of the top brokers that I work with will give an updated valuation every six months, nine months, or a year, depending on what the client's needs are. And if they're an A buyer or an A seller or an A tenant or something like that, they're following up with more and more. Now, not only can we follow up with information like their lease expiry and so forth, but once we've done a lease with them, we can, you know, maybe we've done a five-year lease, three-year lease, 10-year lease. We want to be able to follow up with that easy. Uh, we have a program in here called Timelines. These timelines are easy to create. Uh, you All you need to do is go to templates, timelines, click this little eye, click one of these things here and close your eyes for a minute. It'll flash and it will start building out a cadence. It'll build out that timeline for you. So here I have a five-year lease. We want to make sure we stay in front of those clients. Uh, One-year anniversary, two-year anniversary, three-year anniversary. But we have a three-year, We in three years, we have a option. To renew so let's talk to them about that option to renew uh do we want to take that option do we want to look for new space if they want to look for new space great we can do so similarly in year five it's going to go ahead and tell us to make a new phone call because most likely uh their lease is going to be coming due we might be looking for new space depending on whether their criteria and any time in between that you might find out that they're expanding uh, or maybe they're contracting and and you want to be able to help them uh to best serve what their business needs are so it's always good post-transaction to follow up and then follow up continuously. Now, where it comes in the A, B, and C is to start categorizing some of these clients. And you can easily categorize each one of those clients using something like I have here. So what I've done is I put my investor details for property type. Uh, what does Rachel invest in? Now I can put the property that Rachel invests in. She invests in industrial. Uh, she's an institutional investor. They're looking between uh, this. I missed a little little thing here. Uh, they were looking between 10 million and 25 million. They're on the low end of industrial um, uh, institutional investors. 
maybe we want to teach things like husband or wife or pets or what kind of drink is there and, and high is not a drink it looks like that was a mistake here but uh, rum is in there and then is there a certain market that they invest in maybe it's the west coast maybe it's midwest southwest uh, maybe they invest in different countries or maybe they're from a different country uh, and you want to put some other key points in there we also have the ability to add the notes section on here so you can put some talking points on there put some talking points on that client and then it's easy to filter out any of these data points so again we can filter out those points one of the things that i really like to use in our program and i like to use the verify button and the reason i do is because i use that as a touch button so my a clients are going to follow up with every 30 days and if you watch some of the other videos we have we can show you how to create a simple filter in here that'll show you everybody that you haven't touched in 90 days and you know what, let's just do it here. Let's just come over here. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say filters. And then I'm gonna to go to basic information. And let's see here if I can find exactly what I want um, under the here. And I think that I have their rating, um, client rating, there we go. So we have our client rating contains, and then I have my pop-up table A and I'm gonna hit save. And now I'm gonna hit search. Now here's all my clients that are my A clients. Now, how do I know when I last talked to them? Because I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put it into a nice little view. I'm gonna say edit. And then what I'm gonna do from here, and I think it's important that you see how easy this is live. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say date verified. I'm gonna drag this to the top, hit apply. And I don't need 50,000 alerts. I was talking to a client out of Pennsylvania today and she's like, well, can it alert you and alert you and alert you? And I go, Barb, you have 48 alerts already that you haven't even looked at. Why do you want something else to alert you? And she laughed. But now we can see here, Sandy, she has been verified since 4.15 of 2015, I'm slipping. But if I hit verify, she'll actually come out of the filter. And as I go down this list, it goes from seven to zero. And then I know that every Monday, I go through and I, I check my, a, my A's. And every Tuesday, I check my B's. And every Wednesday, I check my C's. And then I don't have to have a bunch of those follow-ups. And I know most of you that are in Outlook have 97,000 follow-ups and you hit snooze, snooze, snooze. This will allow you to not snooze anymore. And you can easily keep track of that A, B, and C follow-ups. For the ones that you do create the follow-ups and you do have the timelines, we have a direct integration to Outlook Office 365. We have an integration into Gmail and you have an easy to read dashboard that shows you that this here with those little hamburgers are part of a sequence that you have. So each one of these phone calls, each one of these tasks is part of a sequence. And I can see who they're linked to, and I can pull up a list of everybody they're linked to really rapid using linked contacts, companies, or whatever that would be. And again, it makes it very easy to follow up and we keep that in routine. So now we're always, not only we're calling our A, B, and Cs, but we're also calling everybody that's in a routine and we can easily just knock those phone calls out. One, two, three, four. And if you have a faster way, let us know. We'd love to hear from you and how you're doing it. Matt, you, you had a, uh, a contact record uh, for your investor and it looks nothing like a screen that I've seen before. How did you do that? I pay the developer. How come I don't have that? And by the way, everyone, if you have any questions, please please uh, chime in. And we'd love to hear your questions. If you have any ideas or suggestions of uh, great ways that you're using the platform to to prospect, let us know. We'd love to uh, share some of your your ideas and best practices. But Matt, show us these layouts where you were able to create that custom screen. And there's going to be a lot more training specifically on this. But this is a you know really exciting new capability that we've we've just launched. Yeah, layouts have been phenomenal. And now I'm gonna tell you, layouts A are able to be switched throughout the day. So if you're a generalist or you do a little bit of industrial, you do industrial, but you focus on industrial sales and leasing or industrial tenant rep and landlord rep, you can change these views throughout your day. So they're not static. They're also able to be assigned to different people and you can create a default layout. Before you create a layout, you wanna make sure you write down, what are you trying to track? Are we trying to track investor criteria, tenant criteria? Is it office, retail, or industrial? In the upper left-hand or right-hand corner, 
uh, you're going to see a section there called page layouts. These page layouts will allow you to give a complete customized look and feel to different portions of our program or all of our program for those fields. Now, as I mentioned earlier on this call, I said, hey, Jeff, I really enjoy that light brown. And I do. I think the light brown stood out. And for me, blue stands out. So I know that if I put the fields in blue, that I'm going to want to fill the information in. Now, I can switch throughout my day if I want to see all the fields or I just want to see this set. So you can switch hats and it's easily switchable throughout the whole program. And if you're on a team with 2,800 people in your database or you're on a team of two people in your database, you can switch out these views as frequently as you want. Slower, one more time. You're going to see this section here called layouts. You can also go an easier way. If you go to tools, then from here, you're going to be able to, or maybe it's settings. Okay, settings. We're going to go to page layouts and you'll actually see all the different kind of layouts from here. But if you're on a contact record, you're on a property record, you're on a space and you want to change the layout, you go to the upper right hand corner of that record. If you want to create these layouts, you can create the layouts by going to settings and layouts. And you can go ahead and you can start with a fresh slate. Maybe I want to create a new layout and I want to have a fresh slate. I am very OCD. So what I'm going to do is instead of having four columns, I'm going to go to one column so they all look nice and they're all in one column. Maybe I want to change one column to two column. I can do that. Three columns to four columns or whatever I need. I can easily do that. I can drag and drop these fields. I can rename these fields and I can color code these fields as well. I can also make it so it is a simple pop-up. Like my A, B, and C buyers, I wanted to make sure that's a pop-up or a drop-down so I can easily drop it down because I'm a horrible typer. Uh, if you've seen my emails, they're probably voice dictated because I am that bad at typing. I do have a, a disability, though I did have a corneal transplant, so I will use that, some of my excuse. But you can see here, you can color code some of the fields. You can change how they look on there. Maybe you want to do it from left to right, top to bottom. Or you just don't like any of these sections and you're tired of them and you want to remove them. Go ahead and remove those sections. Now I'm going to hit save. Now when I load this here, uh, my section's completely saved and now I remove those fields. So if you want to see three fields, awesome. You want to see 300 fields, have at it. You want to color code it, move it around, no problem. And what I do in my database does not affect anything that Jeff does in, in his database. So it's going to help you with your custom views, your custom filters, your save filters with views, and having your custom layouts are phenomenal. Now, the last thing I want to show you is dialogue styles. Now, everybody makes fun of me when I tell them about dialogue styles. They're like, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't want to hear about it. And a week later, they tell me how amazing it is. Some people say that the program has an older look to it. And some people say it has a modern look to it. Look, we all know everybody has an opinion and we want to make sure your opinion matters. So if you don't want to have the boxes around there or labels on there and you just want to go ahead and have an underline like I have done here, or you want to show the text in here, what it would be for on market, off market, logical, you want to change the colors around anyway, feel free to do so. It's not going to affect anybody else in your system. It's all made for you. So if you're like Jeff and you like that light brown, light brown it up. Because the more aesthetically pleasing you make the system, the more functional it's going to be. Similarly, we just uh, have a new office space. When I went ahead and decorated the office space, I promise you, I did not pick out the ugliest painting I can find. I didn't pick out the ugliest desk I can find. I didn't pick out the ugliest plan I can find. I picked out the best ones that when I come in the office, I'm like, bam, I cannot wait to pick up that phone and cold call every broker in the West Coast today because I knew that got me excited. Similarly, that same functionality with the dialogues, the custom filters, the views, and the colors will make you excited to smile and dial all day long. I'm sure we have a couple questions on that, Jeff. Uh, yeah, there's some some questions coming in, and and, and please uh, chime in with more. We, we've got more to cover, but let's just qu a quick break uh, in your routine to, to answer a couple. Uh, one is, where are you getting your data from? Where are you getting logos from? Where are you getting, you know, so your contact list and, and if you, you know, your property information, maybe talk a little bit about RX State and how the, uh, the that buyer, the, the sort of the comps uh, lead into your, creating your, your buyer profiles, which I think is a fantastic application of the RX data. 
Yeah, so RX Data has been been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I've been working with more and more clients in RX Data. To access R, RX Data, you simply go to RX Data uh, from there. And then from RX Data, it's going to bring you to a nice little landing page. From here, you can choose what kind of property types you want. Uh, maybe you want agriculture or hospitality. Maybe you want mixed use or multifamily. You choose the asset classes you want. Maybe it's all property types in there. However, be careful if you're in a large metro area, uh, you will get different things in there like churches and so forth that you may not want in there. Unless you are Dan the church guy, then you're definitely gonna want that in there. We also have some advanced options in here for number of units, square footage and acreage. And then you can choose your MSAs. Now, uh, if you wanna see what this is gonna cost to add it to you, you can go ahead and you can look at the pricing info right here. We are full disclosure. We show everything up front. We have no hidden fees or anything in the back end that we hide from you. The more MSAs and the more uh, property types you have, the more expensive it's gonna be. But all in together, it's really only 600, 900, or a little bit more per user on top of what we charge for the Navigator, which is already a substantial discount on the annual base price. If you're pay paying monthly for the Navigator, you can probably get into the Navigator Pro with data for less than what you're currently paying for the monthly side. You also will get access to our data import tool. So if you have data from Reonomy, Prospect Now, or other third-party sources, you can easily import that. And you can import comps, sales comps and lease comps. And it will bring in the data, but not only is it bringing in the data for you for the property, but it's also linking it to the comparable. So that way you can see every time that property traded for up to two trades. And I was working with a good friend of mine out of uh, Arizona, at least I think we're good friends here. I've known him for quite some time and it was neat because we were in the data, we were looking at the data and we were able to match the LLC from our RX data import to a contact with the same LLC. Not only did we find out he had that LLC in that one property, but we also found out he had another LLC and most likely has other properties. But now he's starting to able to build that connection and the correlation between the properties, the companies, the locations. And now he's gonna be able to have a great talking point on, hey, look, here's what we can do to help you. Here's what we can do. I think we should do X. I think we should do Y or Z or ABC. Uh, and that's a fantastic way to do that. Well, the other thing that it does, Matt, is it, when you have all of the, that, that transactional data in, it not only gives you the comp, but the comp then feeds into the company profile and it'll, it'll um, consolidate all that information so you know exactly what that company buys and what they've bought. So you know who the best buyers are in the market. So you know that, you know, that LLC, uh, because they, they currently own a hundred properties in the market. They own multifamily between hundred units and 500 units. They, the last purchase, all the, the properties that they purchase have been between uh, 5 million and 15 million. And they, you know, they like, uh, you know, properties in a certain area of town. So you're going to see all that information and, and to be able to run your query, that filter that Matt built earlier against that, that ownership base to know what their, their, buying criteria is and to be able to get the, the best prospects or plug in how many spaces they have in their current square footage of, of across the whole globe the united states or anywhere else and then what kind of lease types they have and when their lease expirations are coming due and so forth you have it all here and well and then you can tie all those companies together under one organization so you have everybody in all the locations under one area that then you can communicate properly with all in one system the uh, questions are pouring in, Matt. So let's we've got to we'll keep going. With the um, show the the uh, voice dictation. What is the keystroke that you hit to get that voice dictation activated? Windows H, the Windows key and the letter H at the same time. You click it. I use it all the time. I absolutely love it. If you're on a Mac, you gotta Google it. I don't know. Jeff has it on a Mac. I'm not sure if he uses it. I use it for everything. It's phenomenal. It allows. How about me to texting? Matt, what, what are we doing from, from a texting standpoint? If you go into your prospecting and... Uh, yeah, so, you might want... so, so texting, there's a couple ways to do the texting. Um, one is you can do it through a mobile app if you have an iPhone. Uh, we are working on some other integrations. If you notice in your program, if you go to tools and you scroll down here to apps, uh, we're starting to add more apps. We'll add a Zap for Zapier. I'm sure everybody will start clapping for that. Uh, but we do have an app integration directly into Ring Central. Uh, so if you do have a Ring Central account, uh, is active. Uh, this will allow you to record your text messages in here as well as 
receive calls, outbound calls, uh, send someone a voicemail, text a response, all within inside of the program here. And again, we'll continue to make more and more of those integrations for you. So if you have ideas of things we should integrate into, uh, let us know. Uh, obviously, it won't be tomorrow, but it's something we do want to hear in the upper right-hand corner. Just say, Matt and Jeff are amazing. Here are three things we want. If you don't say Matt and Jeff are amazing, it might not come. So there's a, a so yeah, Ring, Ring Central integration. We're gonna have they have the texting right out of that. That's awesome. There's a new um, uh, integration with Outlook. There's an Outlook add-in. It's called. So if you go to the uh, in Outlook, you can look for Real Next there. Add us in either Outlook or Gmail, and there'll be a side panel that pops up so that you're able to get leads in straight from Outlook to Real Next. Um, and add them. So right now our our sync is based on people that are already in your system, but to get new people in, they'll, they'll come in through this this add-in. Uh, there's a question about the contact reverting to tenant instead of investor. And we're working on that configuration setting, so you're going to be able to set your where you want to start, the page you want to start on, and, and that will be uh, uh, that that configuration setting will be coming out shortly. Um, RX pricing is, we have individual pricing, and so each individual, and each individual, is, if they're part of a, a team or group, uh, would would be charged for that. We're working on larger uh, enterprise pricing and larger uh, geography pricing. So if you're looking at something that's uh, beyond you and for, for a team or, uh, a group, just call your your real next rep, and they'll walk you through some larger tier pricing. Yeah, so your NetLease brokers and everything, we got your back. Uh, email or call your central region, uh, eastern region, or me for the West Coast, and I'll help you out with that. Tailored emails, uh, they're phenomenal. One of the things that I use my tailored emails for is to tell tenants in the market that we have an amazing app called TorBook. It enhances their tour experiences, allows us to shortlist up to 75% quicker. And here are the five reasons why they should hire us as their tenant rep company, because here are the things with streamlined communication, effective document management, task and deadline management, data security, and enhanced reporting for that client. This is a perfect email that you can send out and it will go ahead and will specify the client's name. You can put a link in here to schedule a calendar with you. And I used ChatGDP to create this email. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, I can see what it's going to say, dear first name and so forth. If I have that first name, schedule it. I can schedule out immediately. Typically, I don't. I usually schedule it out for the next day. And if you're a hustler like me, uh, taking your cold baths or cold plunges, uh, I am doing this not at 3 p.m. I'm doing it at 3 a.m. So 3.42, I'm late to work. I'm going to come here and I'm going to send that out. Now, not only can we personalize these emails uh, for our clients, we can add as many fields that are in this program. So again, the more information we have, hey, just want to let you know, we renamed our dog Penny. I see you have a dog, whatever. Uh, maybe it's going to be, hey, here's your investment criteria you gave us six months ago, has it changed? Here's your tenant requirements you gave us six months ago, has it changed? Those are things you can do uh, with the tailored email campaigns. Now that email is gonna be coming out of info at realnext.com. Like I promise you, 99% of the people will never know it's not from you, that client, unless they hit reply and they look, and, and anyways, nobody cares. If you do want a custom domain or a custom domain subdomain, we do have that available for you. Again, just reach out to your local rep and we'll be able to explain to you how those custom domains work. But more importantly, you have all the statistics built in the program. So. If you're part of a marketing team or you're on marketing or uh, you're in sales or leasing or whatever it would be, uh, you can see that you had 19 emails delivered, eight of them dropped, that means they're bad emails. 10 of them are bounced, that means they're bad emails as well, but eight of people opened it. Call those eight people first. Those are most interactive with it. Go back to Jeff's 595 rule. We send an email to 100 people, five people open it. Let's call those five people first. Those are the ones we want to focus on. Those are our A-class buyers. Those are A-class tenants or A-class sellers. Call those people first. If you put a comp out, if you put a lease comp or a sales comp out and you said, here's X, Y, and Z and ABC, follow up those people and that will help you out with that a campaign. All our campaigns are HTML based. So it does not take a wizard 
to do it because we do have a campaign writer inside of our program. So you can go ahead and simply hit proceed, or you can go to tools and do it that way. You can use one of our templates. Once you have a template that you like, now all you have to do is simply type in the information or add some photos and so forth. There's some great videos on there that walks you through it. If you want a custom template, we can do that for you for a cost. Just put a support ticket in, let them know you're looking for a custom template. They're gonna get you with our best friend, Steve. Steve will go through and walk you through how to create that custom template. We'll put it right in your program with the proper merge fields for you. Or if you're doing it on a listing, we can create one for your listing or your lease uh, through the Real Next Marketplace on there. How are we looking on that, Jeff, with lead follow-up and custom tailored email campaign? That's good. You might want to go into Marketplace and show how the you know, we can broadcast out a property directly. And yeah, then so talk about future properties and syndications. So Marketplace is going to be asset-based emails. So you're going to be based upon emails that you have for lease, emails you have for sale. All you need to simply do is hit campaign. From here, you can choose one of the many templates that we have in our program. We have pre-designed templates, we have premium templates. Those premium templates are included. There's no additional cost, they just say premium because they're really cool. And we have a, a whole host of new ones about to come out that you're gonna love. New designs, new formats, new frameworks so that they are easier to, to manage and work with. Some of these two column formats, people have trouble balancing and making sure that they, uh, they work as well. So we, we created a one column format that really works great and looks beautiful. More importantly, is if you can beat me using your native email and you're not using Real Next, I'll buy you lunch, I'll buy you a steak dinner, come to my office, I'll buy you a steak. I, I made this email in three seconds. Once that listing's on there, all you need to do is pick a template you like and hit next and it's done. You change the title if you want a different title, you hit next if you want it going to specific group. You can also email it to the Real Next community. So for a small fee, $49, 69 and 129, you can hit our national chain, our state chain and our MSA, CBSA chain. Now these are going to be opt-in users that opt in for information pertaining to your asset. So if they said they're looking for industrial properties on the West Coast and you have a multifamily on the East Coast, they will not see that email. But if they have the same email criteria, then they will, and it does give you all the statistics. So a lot Matt, of people- Show um, how you change the, the color, where the color settings are, the questions coming in about how the, to get, make sure these match my, my brand. Yeah, and that's a great one. And it, it get over, gets overlooked. And when I get that email or Jeff gets an email, the first thing we do is we send it over to Steve and say, hey, help him out with the color. You're going to see a little button up there that says customize. Um, one is you can click customize here. And you can go ahead and hit edit defaults. And if you change these colors here in your default settings, they're automatically going to change for each and every one. Maybe you want to change the look or the feel of that to match more of the property itself. No problem. I want to use green on this one. It doesn't change the default, but it just changed it on this email here. So just click customize and that'll allow you to change those preferences in the email campaigns. For your again, system settings across on all of the different modules, there's a configuration for you for your company color and to make sure that whether market edge marketplace or in um, uh, crm reports they're they're coming out using your your company colors and look there's no limit to how many emails you send you can just purchase more if you want to send a million emails a month great if you want to send a thousand awesome there's no limit i had a really close friend of mine saying matt constant contacts the best and i think they're a great company and i said give it one shot with our program his testimony will come out tomorrow and I'll tell you, it'll absolutely blow the doors off you when you hear about his testimony, who's diehard using Constant Contact. They're an amazing company. We're just that much better when it comes to emails and deliver rates and how he, we are able to increase his deliverability, like some astronomical number. And he's, he's hardcore. He's not going to tell me something that's not true. And I was blown away. I was blown away. I wasn't sure what I was getting myself into at first. And I was so stunned by the results. I was is static and that's why I'm telling you about it here. Now, not only can we get that listing out to the CBSA, MSA state, we can get it to our private list, but we can also go ahead and we can add it to our syndication list. So we have a list of channels, Brevitas, Commercial Edge, LD Siri, Quantum Listing, RI Marketplace and Space List. RI Marketplace is an awesome auction site uh, that you can go out there and they're gonna help, like Jeff said, 
uh, that bid ask, they're going to help get through there. They'll also underwrite your property for you to make sure it's a good fit. So if it's not a good fit, they don't put it in the auction. If it is a good fit, they're going to put it in an auction, they're going to market it for you, and they're going to help sell it to get maximized value for your property so you can get all the commission you need. Um, so if you want to sell your property quicker, faster, easier, put it in real next, connect it to these solutions, let RI Marketplace underwrite it, see if it's the right fit. If it is, let them get top dollar for your property. And uh, you go back to having steak dinners with me down in uh, San Diego. Matt, uh, before we wrap up, a question on reporting my activity metric. So uh, Clyde's looking for a report on how many, did I make my calls today? Did I make my connects? Did I, uh, how many messages did I leave? How many appointments, all of the, the management, you can finish up with the, the uh, dashboard here, but then let's wrap it up, go back into CRM and look at performance. But if you, yeah, if you go back to where you were, because I'm sorry, I, there's one thing you didn't show. That was great to show that the, the results dashboard for your campaigns and how that can uh, feed back into your, your activity reports. But then let's uh, look at performance metrics and Yeah, close. so what have you done for me today? And as the market becomes more difficult, as things are on the market longer, people want to know what have you done for me today? And long as you are going through and actually let's do by, by yeah, I like event type the best. So if you check on any one of your projects, projects is your pipeline, pipeline is your lifeline, click it and you're going to say market by event. And I like to do portrait. I know a lot of you like to use landscape. I like to use portrait. Now I'm going to choose a date range. In this date range, I can choose a chart. I can put my client's name. I can put my color and logo. And now it's going to show all the activity that have gone on from property tours to LOIs. Uh, it can show all my phone calls, everything in here. Uh, I can choose to have it add notes. I can go ahead and I can hide history notes. I can hide project notes. I can give a larger time. I can remove the chart. I think the chart says everything you need to. And this works for all aspects. Even tenant reps are starting to use things like this so, so they can go. If you wanted to do, use this to show all of your activities, not just on a project, it would show the event type. So it would have number of calls, number of appointments, number of meetings, number of pitches, whatever, whatever you're tracking, whatever types of events that you record could come up on a, a similar type of activity report. For 100%. Yeah. And then if you just want to see all your activities and make sure that you're doing what you need to do each day or your team's doing what they need to do, all you have to do is click in the dashboard, click history. And then again, that's where the custom filters come into play. I want to see all my emails received uh, that are tied to my listing. Here they are. Here's all my received emails. Here's the attachment. Here's the body of the email. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't CC myself. I didn't add an extra email. I didn't click a little finger it did it automatically when i was out racing dirt bikes it was fantastic now i can go ahead and i can schedule a follow-up from here using my voice dictation add it to one of my listings and get credit for it and um i'm on my way and using the new outlook gmail plugin that turns an email into a contact makes it even even more efficient it will auto search the system to see if they're already in there if they're not in there, it can create them. You can add them as a lead to a project. You can add them to a group. You can schedule them as a team. All right in Outlook or Gmail. You don't even have to open up Real Next. You do have to log in through Gmail or Outlook, but you don't have to be in this Real Next portion here. You can do it right in your Outlook. So I think the one final question, someone, there's some confusion. Uh, actually, a, couple, a few more popped up, but one was, um, uh, what is the difference between the real campaigns or the email, which we call real campaigns in CRM versus marketplace. The marketplace real campaigns is specifically designed to create a property flyer. So it's taking the data from a listing and setting it into a pre-formatted template to broadcast a listing out to a, a, a distribution list, whether again, it's from CR, your CRM to a, a you know targeted list that you create or to the real next community. So that, that's really a special purpose, taking the your listing data and at one in one click it, as matt showed you in just a, a second you've got a listing flyer that can be broadcast out and, and tracked the crm is a very flexible email campaign to put in letters or uh, teasers or ticklers or 
newsletters or research reports or anything that you want to send out to your your, your either individual or a group or a, a prospecting list uh, and it could be like that lease expiration report where it's going to say hey matt i see your lease at 123 main streets due to expire in 2025 uh, May 1st, uh, if you're paying $15 per square foot, the market's moving up. We should try to lock in early before um, before the uh, market gets tighter. Whatever it is, you can you can create that type of custom uh, letter based email and uh, make that work. So hopefully that that clears up the confusion uh, or question. How do you add an email to a project? So that that's uh, it's a simple tag to it matt if you want to sh show how do you, you you know maybe if you can can you, do you have the uh in if from outlook if you could do it actually do uh may show it in in real next but then in out use if the add-in in outlook if you have it handy that you can show how do you add a email to a project yeah so i'll show it to show you to you both ways one is anytime you want to add anything to a project uh history wise and it's not already added in there. You simply hit edit on in history, and then you can just type in their project name in here, right? It's real simple to do that or delete it off a project. So very simple to add anything to a project, whether that's an email received, sent, or anything like that. Now, one of the things that we also want to look at is we want to look at that email plugin. And let's see if I can pull up an email for you. I turned my email off. So I wasn't distracted. That one won't work because I need one that's open. Let me find someone in here that we can't. Let's go to my prop tech webinars. Uh, my prop tech webinars is definitely not in my database, but you can see here I put a real next add in. Now your real next add in, you can pin. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to make me authorized to make sure that I'm logged in. I'm going to go ahead and log into my system. Once you log in once, uh, you won't have to log in most likely for the day however you may depending on your refresh rates and so forth but now what it's doing is it's checking my system it says zero contacts one new contact i can assign it to a group i can sign it to a project i can go ahead and assign it to a <coughs> group team and so forth so link a company link a contact link a group um, i'm going to link it to that company i'm going to link it to that group I'm going to sign it as a lead to that project and I'm going to make it to that team. It's that fast. And now I'm going to check, submit contacts and boom, that information's in there. So it's that simple. It's in Gmail. It's in Outlook. If you need help installing it, let us know. We're here to help you. There's videos on YouTube that show it. If you're one of my clients, let me know. I made a special video just for you uh, with a little bit of tidbits and fun. Uh, you can go ahead and pin it to your toolbar here just by clicking the pin. Uh, but it's a really easy process to do it. Just turn on the uh, Outlook, search real next, add in, and I helped the client do it. It took like, I don't know, 45 seconds this morning, and I'm really slow uh, with anything besides real next. Real next, I'm fast. I can't do PowerPoint or Excel, and if I can do it, you can do it. Well, Matt, thank you very much for covering all the ground we covered today. Thank you all for joining us. Let us know how we did. Let us know things that you'd like to see in the future. We really appreciate all your support, your questions, and, and uh, feedback along the way, but uh, uh, if uh, there's more or better or different ways we can uh, present these webinars in the future, let us know how we're doing. Appreciate that. And uh, again, hope you're off to a great start to the new year and look forward to seeing you back here next week. We'll have a, uh, an invite out for the session next week coming out over the week, early next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.